husband Merritt and I'm Lindsay. We're Merritt and Lindsay Blevins here in Smith's Grove, Kentucky. Our farm is Elk Spring Farms and uh, his family and him bought this farm about eight years ago and um, we run about 400 head on 660 acres. The genetics of our cow herd are mainly F1 Brahma cattle, um, Brayfords and Shaw Brays generally. Um, we also still have some Continental breeds. Um, our bulls, we usually have Charolais or Red Angus bulls. Sometimes we use some Black Angus. Um, I really like Charolais genetics because of the growth. Um, pounds, pounds is what pays. Our conception rates generally are better with cattle with a year. Also, the heat tolerance during the summer, which is when most of your breeding for spring calving cattle is. Uh, that, that's a benefit. Uh, also, hybrid vigor and uh, just overall growth. Well, we start calving, some groups may start calving in February and we'll calve on into uh, February, February, March, April and we'll pretty well finish up the end of April. Um, and then we'll be start weaning towards the end of October, 1st of November. Um, depending on the size of the cattle, when weaned, they're either just fed for 45 days in preconditioned on a creep feeder. Um, but prior to weaning, about 30 days before, we'll pull feeders, creep feeders into the field to get them used to eating grain. And it's not such a challenge to, to get them to take off. When we wean our calves, um, we generally, when we get them up, we'll start gathering cattle at seven o'clock in the morning. We'll get them in the barn. We'll sort the calves off of the cows and uh, within three hours they'll be back out in the field on their own with feed in front of them. And that helps a lot with the health. But as far as vaccinations go, we use Bovashield Gold, Enforce 3, uh, we give them black leg, and we will implant them. Our forage program, um, starting in April, we will start rotational grazing. Um, we have probably seven different fields for each group of cows. For instance, one side over here, we have 200 head of mama cows in there. We have seven pastures to rotate them in and out of, and I think that rotational grazing is very key to what we do. Um, also, we will interseed, occasionally we've interseeded uh, Sudan grass, Sargon Sudan grass, uh, to give some more warm season grasses. And then we will, wrapping up into the fall, we'll start to stockpile some fescue. Um, we have tried interseeding some ryegrass or wheat, and it's, it's okay. But I'm, I think it's fine if you're gonna graze on cropland, you wanna interseed that, but I think that uh, stockpile fescue is a better route. Our hay, we usually, uh, we buy probably now we buy 50% of all of our hay and then we put up 50% of the other half. Um, we, this year we put up some oats off of, a, off of a cover crop, off of some crop land and then we came in and put millet in behind that and then we cut some just regular grass hay. Our feeding program uh, on our cow end it, it mainly we are just unrolling hay every day um, which I like for one main reason is is because it, it, it improves herd health. You don't have them standing in mud. You're, you're moving your cattle every day and then you're also, you're preventing having to spray uh, manure in the spring with a manure spreader, which takes more time and more money. Uh, we just take a chain harrow behind it and drag it over our fields. And we had, uh, a few years ago, we, we were feeding our cattle, our cows with the calves on them in the bunks and uh, the only thing that I have against that is uh, calf health. When newborn calves go up around a trough with a mm -hmm. lot of manure, and that's just part of winter, and a lot of that, you know, just mud. Uh, we, our doctoring rates were significantly higher when we're feeding around troughs. So we try to keep our cows in fresh area every day. The fence line weaning has really, it's, it has helped us tremendously. Um, 
we used to wean our calves without, with just their mothers not being present. Uh, and it was a lot longer process, the cattle. You know, if you've got a long stretch of fence where you can let the cattle walk back and forth, it, it really, uh, it helps them quite a bit. Well, um, Mary and I grow strawberries together, and when I'm not doing that, and also my family grain farms, and when I'm not helping them with harvest, I guess my row is more of a supportive row for him and his father, just whenever they need some an extra hand to help load cattle or sort cattle. I absolutely love doing that and um, bringing a meal to their roundup or just whatever they need. Mary and I are on the Warren County Cattlemen's Board and we enjoy going to that once a month and also help with the social media of Warren County Cattlemen's as well. Market challenges. Uh, the way that we look at it is that there's not much profit in the cattle business and uh, any dollar that you can make goes a long ways. Uh, so weaning your cattle and backgrounding, preconditioning, whatever you want to call it, uh, you're adding value to your herd because the man that's going to buy them from you, he's not doing it for free. He's making money. Uh, so I think that in order to stay in the cattle business and for younger people to get into it and you have to be more profitable and by backgrounding cattle um, it, it makes money. Once we get our calves to uh, the, our target weight uh, we will contact multiple buyers and uh, we'll have them come out here and look at them if they want to see them and we'll take bids and then we have scales here on our place with a, a processing facility and we'll sort cattle and start loading them on pot loads. Also when marketing our cattle, um, when, we're, when we're taking bids, you know, we like to have a two-way slide, which is if the cattle come in, say we base them at 750 pounds, they come in at 775, so we got an eight cent slide, they're going to slide down where it's almost 25 pounds. And then the two-way, that works both ways, so if they come in lighter than what you uh, base them at, you're gaining cents. Uh, and that's the way we like to do it. I think it's the fairest way to do it. Um, we're also, we generally take a 2% shrink on cattle that are fed here and then loaded. If they're, if we're moving them from one place here and then loading them out, it would be no shrink. Uh, just because of the transporting them and then extra uh, sorting and loading. The majority of our cattle are home raised, but uh, we do we started last year buying some three-weight calves uh, out of the sale barn and off of individuals. Uh, we purchased those and a friend of mine backgrounds those for me. Uh, he, we get them preconditioned and then we graze some and then we'll sell some loads of five-weight calves to go on grass. We'll start putting those cattle in in January, February and try to get them ready for grass time.